Okay, uh, so once your notebook instance is ready, so that means now we have a server that AWS set up and we can open the Jupyter. So that is that we have an open editor, which we can do the Python coding, et cetera, uh, by just using a browser. Uh, because we already connected uh, to our GitHub repository, so when you open it, you can see that we already have the same files that is here. So as the same file as here, but except the ignore file, which by default, by definition, is, has been ignored. So if you open the uh, readme file, you can see that is the same thing. Okay. Uh, you can also edit the readme file here as uh, the same as you did on the um, uh, GitHub. So for example, uh, you can see, okay, so this is up updated from notebook instance. Okay. And we can save it. Okay, so we can save it. And you can close that one. And now if you go back to check the readme file, it is not updated yet because uh, we haven't uh, public uh, uh, or publish that, that update yet. So we're going to publish that one later. Okay, so here we have those two files. And let's create our first uh, notebook instance. So if you click new here, and you can see you can create a different type of the notebook. So that support R and most of the types that support the Python, so Condo Python, so you can use TensorFlow, that is machine deep learning, or uh, MXNET, so that is also for deep learning. Uh, so for our class, the counter Python 3 will be fine. Okay, the counter Python 3 will be fine. So let's create a new notebook. And by default, you can see it is on title. So let's give the title. Let's call it lecture 4 and rename it. Okay, uh, so here now we are in the notebook instance. Uh, so if this is your first time to use Notebook, so remember that Notebook organizes all the Python code as different cells. So this is the first cell. So you can here do something like we learned from Python, like print hello. So that is a single Python statement, and you can run it, and it will print hello. And you can insert new cell. So you can insert new cell below or above. And uh, so let's say we can define, we can do a lot of stuff that we have learned so far. Um, also in notebook, other uh, cells are executed uh, one by one. So if we see, we define a variable a equals one and we run it. And now we see print a and then we run it. So the notebook will know, okay, now the a equals one. So if you just run the second cell directly without executing the, if you run the third cell directly without executing the second cell, then you will have an error. Okay. So for example, if now I start, restart my current cell, so it will empty everything. So now if I run the third cell directly, so now I have an error because A is not defined. So you have to run the cell one by one. So I define A equals two, and now I run it. So now we get one, that is correct. And you can also see that there are different models or modes. So for example, right now it is in a code model where you can edit your Python code. Uh, you can switch that one to the markdown mode. So that means here you can add some descriptions and all the markdown we are following the markdown syntax. So for example, this is a description. And now if you run it, so this will be considered a comments in this notebook. And you can also adjust the style of the description. So for example, if you want have a list, so one point a, a 
two point B and three point C and you run it. So now you can see now we have a, a numbered list. Okay, and if you want to give a headline, so you can just see, just use hashtag that will control the headlines so that, he, for example, the lecture four use SQL. Okay, so that will be a headline. Okay, um, so you can search online and also you can search more about the markdown syntax. I believe there are a lot of uh, tutorials that are online available. So if I can, for example, this web page now I'm viewing, so you can see that one hashtag indicating indicates the heading level one two hashtags, and also the other um, syntax uh, issue. So just if you just search Google Markdown syntax, then there are a lot of good tutorials, so which can make your notebook uh, look like more professional. Uh, we can also delete those cells. So, for example, if you want to choose this one and you go to cut and you can delete those cells. Okay. So, now let's view some basics of the Python that we have learned uh, from last semester. So, in Python, there are several data containers. We have list. So, list are just group of values and also all the items in a list has an order, so you can sort the item in a list. And the definition of using list is just use the square bracket, so you can declare a list. Or you can use the building, built-in list function. A dictionary is also a data container that contains a group of key value pairs, and it is paired um, key values, and also the symbol is this curly bracket. We also have tuple. So tuple is also a group of values. However, once you define a tuple, those values within a tuple cannot be reassigned. And we use this parenthesis to define a tuple. Set is also another Git container that contains a group of values. However, all the values in a set must be unique. And we also use the curly bracket uh, to donate a top, uh, to donate a set uh, data container. Okay, and for loop. For loop is a way that we can iterate all the elements in a sequence. So the syntax is that for item in uh, in the item list, and we can do something that for the current item, and also make sure that you you have you do have those indentations. And also for example here, we see okay, we define a string, and also we see for each single item in that string, we print that item. So that's why we have those results. Uh, the string also has a split function. So we split a string, and also we see for each single word in that string, and we have those results. We also mentioned the string format in last semester, and I said that string format is very useful in this semester in the SQL uh, relational database. So here it comes. So, so let's first review what is string format. So for any string that we define, it has a built-in function called dot .format. So dot .format means that um, any item that within this premises can replace the field in the string part that are surrounded by this curly braces or curly brackets. Okay, so for example here, here we have a string that is the sum of one plus two is, and now we have cur curly bracket, and we see dot format, and the parentheses that the value in this parentheses will be filled into the place where we have a curly bracket, so it will replace the curly bracket in the output. Okay, so here you can see that we print, and we have two items, a term will go to the first one, and 23 will go to the second one. So if we print that syntax, we can say term salary is 23. Okay. And we can also define the order. So by default, the order is the same order that you define here. So the, the first one will go to the first curly bracket, 
And the second one will go to the second curly bracket. However, if you type numbers inside those curly bracket, and the first one will go to where you type zero, and also the second item will go to the curly bracket where you typed one. Okay, so in this case, still we have that Tom's salary is 23. Okay, so let's try that one in our um, uh, notebook. So first, let's say we want to give it a, a heading for this section. So we use two uh, hashtag, and this part is review Python. So hopefully you still remember those stuff. So the first thing that we want to try is try the follow. We say, okay, we define demo string equals this is my string, enter. So here in one cell, you can type multiple lines. And we say for each single word item in that demo string dot split. Okay, and colon. And now if you type enter, you can see a notebook by default give user indentation, which is nice. Say so print the word item. So now if you write, okay, uh, I think I have a typo. Okay, so it should be word item. Okay, now if I run, okay, now you can see that that string has been split into three, uh, four items. Now let's try the string format. Okay, so let's say uh, we def print. Okay, uh, here let's say we use the first curly bracket. And this one plus this one is this one. So now we have three curly brackets, okay? And dot format. So in this parenthesis, so we say one, two, and also one plus two. So you can have a calculation in this um, parenthesis. So the first item will go to the replace the first curly bracket. The second item will replace the second curly bracket. The third item, which is a calculation, will replace the third curly bracket. So now if I rewrite, you can see one plus two is three. Okay. Uh, so that is a very simple review of the Python. And now make sure that if you save it, okay, and if you close that one, so now you can see we now we have a new lecture for notebook. Uh, you can shut that down because we are no longer using that one. And now if we go back to the seat maker, okay, so suppose that we, we are done with the lecture. So we are not yet, but suppose we are done with the lecture. So now if we open the Jupyter lab, okay, we just close the Jupyter editor. So we open the Jupyter lab. Okay, and on the left side, now you can see that all the files right now in our repository. So we have lecture form, which is notebook, lessons, and also the readme file. And if you go to the GitHub icon, that is this one. Okay, um, and now you can see that the notebook is not on track. So because it is a new file, so uh, we see we click the plus. So we keep tracking that check and tracking that one. And also we can see that we have readme file that is not a new one, but it has been changed. So we, again, we also check that one. Okay, so we tell the GitHub, okay, so we have two files that we have changed. And next, we are going to commit that change. So here you are going to write a summary so that you say, okay, so uh, first, Notebook. Okay, and also you can add more descriptions uh, for this one. So, review 
Python. And next, we're going to commit that change. Uh, so because this is the first time, so uh, you're going to um, provide your name and also email. So here I tell you, so this is shipping way from notebook. And also you can provide your email. So that can be different from your uh, GitHub, uh, GitHub account. So here I just type my Gmail again. Okay, uh, so now that change has been committed, but before we uh, leave that one, the last thing is that you see this cloud icon. So you have to push that one to the cloud. So let's see, push that. Okay, so now you can see your gate push completely successfully. So that's great. And now if we go to your GitHub, and uh, if you refresh, you can say, okay, so now we have a uh, update. So readme has been updated. And also if you open your lab form notebook, you can see here we have the notebook and it is open public on, on GitHub. Okay, so that's pretty cool. So that is a brief review that how we can create a notebook. Um, and also how we can do something like in Python and also how we can push the change to GitHub.